idea where I was going. <laughs> Neither did I. We're running because the colors are going away. Well, they're not going away. They are. The sunset. It's okay. There's a golden hour to be had that Shana thinks we need to get to quicker than we were. So, yeah, but now we're sprinting on the side of the highway. 50 in the morning in sandals and it hurts watch out for that Jurassic Park mud <sighs> Kinda. Dang, look at the fucking sun ah! <laughs> uh, okay I'll set up on this thing so I don't have to get all super sandy oh what what
fishing boat explosion out there. Come on. They just left the trash open. All the bottles like spewing everywhere. How rude, right? Dicks. I just picked up like 20 bottles. <laughs> well, thank you. You're so welcome. Saving all your asses. Saving everyone's asses. <laughs> one bottle at a time. <laughs> this question is from Ryan Copeland. He says, vlog covering basic tactics for determining flyable versus non-flyable locations. In other words, what are your major turnoffs and red flags? I notice you have an R you look for RF sources a lot for one. What else? Cover pre-planned crash spots. Uh, holy puddle, watch out. X-File routes, I don't know what that means. What's X-Fill, X-Fill routes. Uh, do you measure distance and stuff on Google Maps? Uh, so I'm gonna combine this question with another question that I got from a guy named David Clute. He says, love the videos as always still. I'm interested to know in location selection. Uh, I, ha I know it's sometimes a gray area or whether or not you're allowed to fly in certain places. I'm sure it's a lot like skateboarding. You fly until you're told to get out. So as far as picking locations goes, uh, there's like usually two to three ways that I do that. The main one, which is kind of self-explanatory, is I just drive around and look at the world like I would if I were skateboarding. And if I see something interesting, then I just go fly it. Uh, and another one would be uh, uh, friends telling me about spots that they've seen doing the same thing, just walking around, driving around, seeing spots. Maybe they go out to lunch with their brother or their sister, or whatever, and they find a really cool spot and they wanna go back to it. So they just take note of the spots that they saw. And then the other one is sometimes I'll go onto Google Maps and I'll actually um, like look for areas like parks or open areas that look like they have trees or maybe some uh, large gradient change. So that's kind of how I look for spots. Now, when I find a spot that looks cool to fly, how I gauge whether or not I can fly it or not, or if I should fly it, is really just kind of just kind of common sense. You, you look at the situation, are you gonna do any harm to anyone or anything if you crash? Um, and I assess that risk and if my quad goes down am I going to be able to retrieve it if not is it worth it so that's the big thing is it if it's worth the footage if I think and that's kind of a personal preference if I think the footage is going to be like super gnarly then I'll then I'll fly but if I think maybe the footage is going to be mediocre or the lighting is not that good then I won't fly based on the risk versus reward kind of mentality Obviously I trust my gear and I make sure that it's gonna work beforehand, test it. I don't just bring a brand new quad out and go fly it over some person's house or something. So I make sure the quad has been tested and flown flawlessly for months before I go out and do stuff like this. So I can pretty much guarantee unless there's some obscure RF source, which yeah, I do bring my RF Explorer, but in reality, I don't use it as much as I should. And for the most part, if you have a Spectrum Hopping 2.4 radio, you don't really have much to worry about unless you're in a really urban area or next to some kind of epic source of RF. We interrupt this program for a short blurb. So in typical RF situations, when I go to a spot that I know, I'll have a radius of a, or a boundary that I usually fly in. Now, when I go to a new location, I will shrink that radius by about half. And the radius changes on various locations that you fly. So just kind of understand that when you go to a new location, you don't know how far you can go. You don't know what the RF situation is like. So play it safe, stay close, make sure you're not gonna go out too far and lose video or lose RC. And especially in spots where you're gonna lose a quad. So try to stay close, try to stay in a safe position or what you might consider safe. So that's really how I pick spots and how I decide whether or not I'm gonna fly them. And yeah, I really do just go and fly stuff and if I get asked to leave, which is actually rarer than you would think, then then I leave. But other than that, it's just kind of like skateboarding. You do the same. You don't mess anything up. You tr I mean, you're flying. It's not like you're grinding anything like a skateboard. You're fucking like actually 
tearing stuff up where this thing if it crashes it's like someone threw a, a sandbag at your building or something so that's kind of how I look at it and as far as flying over people and whatnot I don't typically fly near people that I don't know and yeah thank you guys for watching my videos subscribing and liking and sharing thank you it's really helpful and I appreciate all the positive feedback and if you have negative feedback that's cool too I read that as well I try to read every single comment that you guys post so don't think that you're just posting for no reason I read them and if it's a question that I feel like I can answer within I don't know a five minute to ten minute vlog then I'll try my best to answer every single question you guys give me so thank you very much for watching and have a good day conditions are very god damn is this a fucking wet god damn it my ass is wet now